In our final chapter for this tutorial, we will export our stone well and snow into Keyshot where we will apply and edit materials to our surfaces. Additionally, we will learn the basics of how to adjust HDRI lighting and background images to create a stunning render. Okay, now it's time to take our model into Keyshot and render it. And uh, apologies, my voice is a little rough right now because I'm fighting off a cold, <clears throat> so I'll try not to make too much noise. But anyways, um, we're going to take this and send it to Keyshot, and if all goes well, we'll get a render that looks something like this. Now you'll notice there's more stones in this one, a little more detail. Uh, that's just because I've done this a couple times, and I've been testing it out, so each time is a little bit different. So I expect yours might be different as well. But anyways, this is going to be kind of the end goal that we're going to be looking for that we should be able to achieve in Keyshot. So the first thing we want to do is if you have the bridge to Keyshot, we're going to send this over by clicking on this render button and going to external render and clicking on Keyshot and this will enable our BPR render button to send this over to Keyshot. Now one thing that you want to make sure you do before you send this over is to make sure that you can see your textures applied to your subtools within the viewport uh, because we're going to be using our UV coordinates that we generated in, with our Z plugin tool and also the ones that are just naturally here on the plane for the snow within Keyshot, but if we don't have these showing, when we send it over, it won't retain the UV coordinates. That might be a bug they just need to fix in the future, but it is something that at least I've noticed exists right now. So for example, on each of these, you can see I do have a little bit of a texture map even down here. So that way, if I send it over, it will retain those UVs. But if you send something over and you see the step later in the process and you're like, this isn't working properly, it's probably because you didn't have your texture map showing the one displayed on here on your sub tool before you sent it. So let's go ahead and send it over. Okay, and here's our model within Keyshot. And of course we just have uh, default lighting, um, but you can see that we have the texture material on here, the one that's just straight from Keyshot, or sorry, ZBrush. But we're gonna modify that a little bit. And before we do anything, I want you guys to download an HDRI map from the cloud library. If you guys don't have this, if you do have a Keyshot membership, you can sign up for this. But it's a really good user community for um, Keyshot. So click on this, and what that'll do is this will pull up a, um, a website for you where there's just tons of really great resources like materials and uh, environments, all sorts of good stuff. So the ones that you want to look for that you should download to be able to use if you want to follow along in this tutorial is in the environments. What you want to do is just type in snow as the keyword. And that'll pull up this one, this outdoor mammoth one. If you just click on here, you can download it and then you'll be able to bring it into Keyshot on your own. You may have to do it on your own and figure out how to do that, but you can get it. And then within the materials, there's a good one that we can use for snow that's called uh, something glacial, M76 glacial. So this one I downloaded as well, and we're gonna be using that in Keyshot. So if you wanna follow along with the tutorial, you do need to download both of those because I don't want to include those with the Gumroad tutorial since this is somebody else's work. But uh, it's easy enough, you can get it from there and then it's all free. So I'm sure they probably would be totally cool with me sharing those with you guys, but I don't wanna take any risks. So basically in here, once you have those in here, um, you can go here to the uh, environment section in the background. If you click on your downloads, you can quickly find the outdoor mammoth uh, image that you downloaded. So just double click that. And now you can see this showing up in our viewport. So if we rotate around here, you can see the light affecting the well a little bit different each way we rotate it. And I kind of like how the light's hitting it based off of this angle, but I don't like the horizon line and some of the other um, parts of the HRI map. So we can adjust that. If we come over here to environment, Right here, we can just do a quick rotation if you want. You can rotate the background by keep and keep your well where you want. So for example, remember how we want to have this showing up in our screen, kind of like that nice snow drift that we worked on? Let's have that, but I want to have the nice lighting in the background. So I kind of like this side because it's nice and bright from over here and also it provides kind of an interesting background for our render. So I'm going to do that. And also I want to have more blue sky so we can also come here to height and move this up or down. So let's move this down a little bit. So it feels kind of like we're on a hilltop. And I think even that's pretty cool. Yeah, 
Let's do that. I think that's about right. So this gives us some nice lighting and a good base to start with. And the next thing we want to do is apply some actual materials to our scene. So what we're going to do is come back over here to material. First one I'm going to use before I use that snow one I was showing you is to come into the stone. Up here we have brick. And let's just take that and drag that right on top of our stone mesh. So that's copying over our original material from ZBrush, but that's totally fine. Because for us, we just want some of the base settings that's on this material. So let's come in here, and you can see here we have the material on the scene. Let's double click that. And what I want us to do now is we're going to replace that diffuse spec and bump with our own diffuse spec and bump textures that we had previously. As you remember, that's included with the Gumroad tutorial. So you can see here the stone, the bomb, the diffuse, display spec, all the stuff that we made earlier. So let's just come in here and first we're going to double click the diffuse one and let's pick that. Let's pick the stone wall pattern diffuse. And then now that's applied to the surface. And what I want to show you though, as you can see, the frequency is just way too high and the mapping is kind of strange. That's because down here the mapping type is currently sent to box map. So since we have UV coordinates on this, we want to switch this to UV coordinates. And now you see it's still not on here quite properly, but that's because we need to turn this off, this DPI. And now everything should be matching up okay. If it doesn't, it looks strange. You could try where uh, you flip vertical and see if it matches up, but things should be pretty good uh, based off this if you just pick UV coordinates and then you turn off the DPI. The other thing you want to make sure is that this sync button is turned on, and that means if we add another map over here or over here, everything kind of stays in sync. So let's do that. Now let's grab our spec pattern, open that, and that gets applied. We want to make sure this is on UV coordinate. You'll see the UV map gets messed up. And that's kind of interesting. Each time all you have to do is just click back on this again and go to UV coordinate, and then it updates. So let's do the same with bump, stone wall pattern bump. We get that in there. Again, you'll see this mess up, so switch to this, go to UV coordinates, and that's applied. And if you want to change the strength of the bump, you can come in here, increase it so you get more frequency, etc. You can just play around with that if you want to. Speaking of playing around with some of the settings, I'm going to come here to diffuse, and I'm going to crank up the brightness of that a little bit just so we can get it to react a little bit brighter in the light. And that feels kind of nice. So now we've created our own stone shader, and we could change the name of that if we wanted, but I'll just keep that as brick right now. So there you go, you already know how to adjust some basic materials and their textures uh, within here. And one thing that you want to check is sometimes the um, scale gets changed a little bit. <clears throat> so in this one, I'm just going to set this to one and one. And just make sure all the maps are lined up properly. This is basically the equivalent of tiling most of your other 3D applications. So if you had two in here, it'd be tiling uh, across the board that way. Or at least that's what I think it is based on what I've been experimenting. I could be totally wrong because I was learning how to use um, the materials and the different settings as I was creating this tutorial. So correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, so now we have that set up and now we want to get our snow onto this. So that's where we come to our materials and go to our downloads. And here is the one that was called that um, Glacial 76 shader. I changed the name to Snow over time, but um, if you guys download it, will be the one that's called the Glacial. And again, just drag that onto one of your surfaces. And you can see the lighting is reacting pretty nicely with this already. I mean, we can keep this and not make any adjustments, and it's going to look really cool. And Instead of dragging this one over here once and then onto this other one next, I want to make sure that the snow settings, because I'm going to adjust them, stay the same with the material. So because of that, we're going to use the one that's over here that's already applied to the base one and then drag and drop it onto this other snow. So now you can see we have the uh, custom snow material on top of this. And by the way, since we're in here, I just want to show you that yes, indeed, you know, our well is fully 3D. Okay, so now one thing that I think is kind of cool to do with that snow shader, let's double click that, and now we can get to the properties of this onto the textures. And the two that we can mess with that are useful is the specular and the bump. 
Uh, the author who created this did some interesting stuff with the diffuse. So we don't really need to mess with that right now. So let's just come into spec. Let's double click that. And let's pick this Moss A Tileable Diffuse Snow. And this is just a diffuse map that I made based off of um, an actual moss material. And for this, let's just turn this back to some of the default settings, one and one. Uh, it's probably actually zero and zero. And then for the scale, let's change that to one and one for now. Let's make sure this is on UV coordinates because each of these do have UV coordinates. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're going, well, let's just rotate around this a little bit. Okay, so now we get uh, a, a kind of interesting pattern going in here that's based off of that map, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, let's see how that goes. Switch to my UV coordinates again. And we start to see some interesting stuff happening here. And sometimes stuff will kind of switch back here and you just need to kind of click on these and play with it a bit. So I'm gonna do the same with our bump. Come here and let's pick this uh, bump that we had. And the bump maybe is the one I should have done first because you can really clearly see where this is applied to the surface. And obviously this is feeling a little bit too big because this should be kind of like a twig that we have in scale. So I'm gonna try and get this scale to change with a 0.5 and a 0.5. So think of the 0.5 and 0.5 as like a scaling of doubling your scale um, within your program, where if we had changed it up to like two and two, we'd actually be uh, making it larger. So it's kind of the opposite of what the 3D programs are doing. If you want to double it in a 3D program, you would put it to like two, but in Keyshot, you're actually decreasing it each time. So for example, 0.25 and 0.25, you can see the time lane gets really, really small on this. But I thought the 0.5 and 0.5 was pretty good. So we can do that and get a pretty decent setting. And the nice thing now is because um, we did it together, it's updating these simultaneously. And since we have sync on down here, it should have updated our specular as well. So yeah, should be in pretty good shape there. Now all those are matching up. And I mean, honestly, that's pretty much all there is to it. At this point, usually what I do is I'll take the final render, I do some comp tricks and uh, Photoshop to try and get stuff to you know glow a little bit like you see here. And I uh, just play around with it to get a slightly nicer render. But right off the bat, you already get something that looks pretty cool out of Keyshot. If I had more time, I'd really kind of finesse this and make it look really good, but the purpose of this tutorial was to just give you guys an introduction to all these different techniques and features. So I hope it was valuable. hope you guys learned something. And I guess just to wrap this up really quickly, because um, I'm curious to see what the snow would look like if we actually put a, another map in here. So let's drag this right over. And let's, yeah, we'll keep this snow on it. And For our spec, we'll pick this snow again. And that probably wasn't the best idea. That didn't turn out really well. So anyways, yeah, we, we'll just kind of undo that and then keep what we had previously. I just always like trying stuff on the fly. So thanks again for your time, guys. And uh, that's about it. Hopefully I'll have some cool new tutorials to show you guys in the near future. And if not, enjoy the holidays, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. If you like this video, the entire tutorial is available for free on Gumroad. Click the yellow Gumroad pop-up box below and you can download all five HD videos for this tutorial series. Additionally, I've included everything that I demonstrate in the project, such as the maps that you see here, like this diffuse, displacement, spec map, and even my bump map. And then in addition to that, I've also put my ZBrush file in here that you guys can open up and use. And finally, I've uh, included the Keyshot file. So whether you want to create everything yourself or use my maps and files to follow along, everything's absolutely free. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching these tutorials and I hope you learned a few valuable tricks. Until next time.